seems like Kim Kardashian might be facing some serious consequences for her alleged involvement in Diddy's activities. The latest reports suggest that during the raid on Diddy's house, authorities uncovered some disturbing footage that implicates Kim in some wrongdoing. According to leaked footage, Kim was allegedly heavily involved in Diddy's crimes and played a major role as his helper. If these allegations hold true, it could spell major trouble for Kim, potentially leading to significant prison time. It's a shocking turn of events that's sure to rock the Kardashian empire to its core. With the spotlight shining brighter than ever on Kim's actions, it's unclear how she'll navigate her way out of this potentially career-ending scandal. As the investigation unfolds and more details emerge, one thing's for certain, Kim Kardashian's world is about to be turned upside down. Kris Jenner, The Kardashians, and Sean Diddy Combs. What may appear as simple high-profile networking could potentially hint at deeper, darker layers of interaction. In August 2014, Kris Jenner captivated the media spotlight when she unveiled a series of engaging photographs with Sean Combs on her Instagram account. These weren't just any ordinary snapshots. They were a calculated promotion for Diddy's latest entrepreneurial venture, the Music Network Revolt. This particular act of public display was intricately timed and executed. Following a notably flirtatious encounter on Jenner's own talk show, a platform where Diddy had been a guest. But Revolt shared a post on social media saying, Our focus has always been on one that reflects our commitment to the collective journey of Revolt. One that is not driven by any individual, but by the shared efforts and values of our entire team on behalf of advancing, elevating, and championing our culture. And that continues. According to the network, while Diddy has previously had no operational or day-to-day -day role in the business, the decision helps to ensure that Revolt remains steadfastly focused focused on their mission. So in case you didn't know, Revolt was co-founded by Diddy and Andy Sean back in 2013 as a music-oriented digital cable television network. The channel is dedicated to urban contemporary music and the programming of the platform also covers social issues faced by the African-American community. Diddy took the opportunity to reminisce about Jenner, mentioning a bikini photograph of her from the past that had caught his eye. He praised her looks and charm, embedding personal admiration into what might have otherwise been a straightforward professional interaction. Yes. So who was with you this weekend? A bunch of my friends. Diddy, Quincy, Justin Bieber, so far so much. Montana. <laughs> no, half the people you're naming. No. If Good. you were seriously dating somebody, would you tell me? No. You have to get these margaritas out of here. Why don't you drink it? Yeah, but last night. She didn't go to bed. I haven't been to bed yet. You haven't? I, I want to be clay when I grow up, Court. Oh, you're just so little. Like, my balls are just oh. going. <laughs> I got on a plane at 5.30 a.m., well, this party, I think half the people there were butt naked. You would have loved it. Um, when you met the going to, like, cool friends, you know? Well, kind of. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Stop. Stop talking. And you met Chloe's new crew of friends. And all I said was, yes. On one hand, it could be seen as a clever ploy to garner attention for his revolt network by associating it with a high-profile celebrity known for her expansive reach and influence. On the other hand, the personal comments introduce an element of intimacy and curiosity to the relationship. The montage of photos that Jenner posted did more than just promote a business. It signaled a partnership that seemed to straddle the lines between professional collaboration and personal connection. One of the most pivotal collaborations was Jenner's involvement with Diddy's Revolt TV network. Indicative of its innovative nature and the high stakes involved, the collaboration deepened as both families 
became intertwined with the project. Chris's daughter, Kylie Jenner, and Diddy's son, Christian Combs, were prominently involved, showcasing a strategic blend of an old guard celebrity and new age influencers. This merging of family brands not only added a layer of intrigue and marketability, but also suggested a mutualistic relationship where both families could leverage their collective fame and social media prowess to propel Revolt's visibility and success. The pressure to remain relevant and impactful in an industry known for its relentless pace and unforgiving competition was a significant challenge. I think so much on P. Diddy right now. When in actuality, everybody should be focusing their eyes on this man, Sir Lucian Grange, aka the chairman and CEO of Universal Music Group. Yes, the same Universal Music Group that had all of its artist music taken off of TikTok. This situation is way bigger than anybody really thinks. And hopefully I'll be able to open your eyes just a little bit more. And there's numerous accusations of Lucian and UMG sponsoring these parties, including from artists like J-Lo herself. It gets pretty dark. And if you really want to get deep, over 70% of the songs that just so happened to be on the Billboard 100 just last year in the last quarter of December, okay, were literally owned by Universal Music Group people. And in the 1,000 plus page documents, Lil Rod Jones and a lot of other defendants as well admit that Lucian himself was at each one of those parties. So that in itself should really tell you something. And did you know, across the course of Lucian's career, Grange's work with the likes of ABBA, Drake, Elton John, Jay-Z, Katy Perry, Queen, Rihanna, The Rolling Stones, Sam Smith, U2, and Amy Winehouse. Oh, and ironically, Grange is a sir by virtue of being knighted by the Queen of England in 2006 for services to British business and inward investment, as well as his accomplishments in the music industry. And was in the process of acquiring EMI from Citigroup back in 2011 and was completed in September 2012, UMG buying the British major record company for $1.9 billion. Thus acquiring labels and a roster of stellar talent, supposedly, including top-selling artists like Katy Perry, like I mentioned, Lady Annabellum, The Beatles, The Beatles, and The Beach Boys. This shit goes way back, people. And it's pretty damn ironic when you consider the fact that P. Diddy's best friend is none other than Jay-Z himself. And is anybody actually aware of the controversy that lies behind Jay-Z's name? If anybody would like a video upon Jay-Z and his controversy alone, I can make that video. It's going to be at least 10 minutes long. Because boy, let me tell you, there's even allegations that go back to Tupac and Biggie. And isn't it ironic that Diddy's name has been heavily surrounded around these cases for so many years? This is for entertainment purposes only, by the way, so I don't get a violation. And then people like Eminem make a mockery of the situation by saying he did it at the end of his diss track. Oh, and isn't it just ironic that Eminem, a.k.a. Marshall Mathers, just so happened to be on that list? I'm sure we all know about the list that I'm talking about. Well, the supposed list, that is. Regardless, people only refuse to acknowledge those names going to that island in the beginning because it doesn't seem realistic. And the only reason that it doesn't seem realistic is because the entertainment industry has convinced you otherwise. Does anybody actually understand what music is, what frequencies are, what they do to your brain? You know that really annoying ass song that you just can't get the fuck out of your head? Frequencies, people. Everything around us contains a certain frequency. And if you align your mind with certain frequencies, your brain waves shift. They're altered, sometimes to calm you, sometimes to irritate you. Our perception of our realities around us daily might or might not be false. The pivotal moment came when a raid on Diddy's house allegedly unearthed incriminating evidence, as claimed in a widely circulated TikTok video. The content of the video suggested that this evidence could potentially connect Kris Jenner to some of Diddy's legal issues. The media's response was swift and relentless, with discussions and debates about the implications of Kris's association with Diddy dominating headlines. Also, when they raided Diddy house, they're saying that they found incriminating evidence on Kris Jenner and they looking to talk to her, but Kris Jenner put the Houdini and disappeared. Diddy told them that he he's going down he's taking everyone down so i don't think that you know we hearing that chris jenner run off with diddy i don't think that was what was happening i think you know by way of information changing consistently meaning being passed on the kardashian brand which had long navigated the treacherous waters of public scrutiny was once again under the microscope the implications of these allegations extended beyond just public perception. They posed potential legal risk that could affect future business dealings and partnerships for the Kardashians. Every move Chris made following the news was watched closely. Despite the swirling allegations, Chris Jenner maintained a robust public presence, actively updating her social media with content unrelated to the scandal, steering the public focus away from the rumors. Any down to me i got the mother like y'all think i got a mother-in-law i got the mother-in-law of all mother-in-laws and it was just let me tell you what happened it's like last christmas 
they all flew in, like five of my family members, because it's been a year after I've been in a hospital and, and I put in UCLA for mental health issues. And they came to give me some love for Christmas. And the family got on the phone together and they decided that it's their tradition to go over Courtney's house and open up gifts. And that it wasn't enough room for my family to be there that morning and that my family that flew in could watch my kids walk open up gifts later that afternoon. And I didn't have a voice and there was no man with a voice in that family. Then there was the lawsuit from Joy Dickerson Neal who claimed Diddy forced himself on her on camera back in 1991 when she was in college. Another woman going by Jane Doe also alleged Diddy and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall took advantage of her and her friend also sometime in the 90s. Kris Jenner apparently is like all into these young guys and partying with them. Like her former bodyguard is suing them because she had inappropriate behavior with him. Thank you for joining us on the investigation journey. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below with your thoughts on this tangled web. Goodbye.